Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Trapper Don CT Outdoor Show. We're here at this spot where I caught this coyote this morning. And I dispatched it. But I did not have any gloves with me, so I was not handling it. As you can see, he was caught firmly in a padded jaw trap, legal in Connecticut. It's January 14th today. And I didn't handle it because if you look at it, it's full of mange. It looks like a year old coyote, maybe two. But you can see all the mange on him. Okay? I did bring gloves with me and I already called the farmer. He dug me a pet. And I just want to do a little education thing or educational of why we trap or one reason why we do there's many re reasons why we trap first off as they say they can't put it in you and they can't take it out of you you're either born with it or you're not okay and i was born with it and i'm proud to say i'm a trapper but anyway one of the reasons we do trap or are trappers and we understand this is wildlife management and when you have a area like this small farm, 23 acres, this area can only sustain so much wildlife. This habitat can only sustain so much wildlife. With food, so animals don't starve. If you have too many animals and they eat all the food, animals will start dying of starvation. If you have an overpopulation of animals, you get disease. You get mange, and you also get distemper, and you get rabies, okay? And as trappers, we understand that you must have animal and population control, especially where I live. I don't live way out in the hills of Montana, okay? Not that it's any different out west or anything. You still have to harvest the surplus animals. And certain groups of people will not tell you that. They will not tell you the truth about hunters and trappers and overpopulation of animals and keeping the animals in check. Because they know the truth, but they won't spread the truth. So what I'm saying is, by me taking this young year-old or two-year-old male coyote full of mange, which is not curable in the wild animals, if your dog came home with a little mange or had it, you could take your dog to the vet. Get a little cream and maybe some pills and the vet could take care of it. But there's not a vet in town that would let me bring this savage coyote in and try to cure it. Okay, so that's out of the equation. It's a wild animal. Coyotes are nasty. They will bite. They could tear you up. But my point is on the mange, it's January 14th, 2019. Breeding season has begun. Now, if this young male comes in contact with a female to breed, he is going to transfer that mange to that female. And it's just going to go down the line. And if she got pregnant and survived and had her pups, she would transfer the mange to the pups. Can you follow what I'm saying? So by taking this coyote out and burying it, I have taken this coyote out of the chain so it can no longer infect any other coyotes. Okay. On this property, which is 23 acres. Here's a good trail where the deer come from. This road connects to another road. Up there I had the cage trap. As a matter of fact, last year is where I caught George, the bobcat. Rest in peace, buddy. Um, but late November, when I started trapping, I caught two red fox in that cage. One was so covered in mange, he didn't have a spot of fur on him. He looked like one of those furless cats, but it was all scabs and this. And it was legal trapping season, so both foxes were put down. So on this 23-acre property, within two months, I have taken out three animals that were covered in mange. Those three animals can no longer infect any other animals with the mange parasite okay so i just wanted to do a little educational thing of wildlife management and why we trap okay um right over there yes uh last week was where i caught that very healthy 52 pound male right over there i'm not going to go near the set 
but he was healthy. This one or two year old coyote is not healthy. And he probably wouldn't have lasted another six months. All his hair would have fell out. And in the area I'm in, where I'm trapping, I've been getting a lot of reports of mange and rabies going through. Sorry about the phone going off. Always happens when I'm doing a video. But I just want to do a little bit education here. A little educational video for you people that might not understand why we trap. See the mange? That should be a well furred coyote. I'm going to take them out of the trap with gloves, put them aside. I'm going to remake the set. Okay. But again, that's why we trap. By taking this coyote and those two red fox out of the equation, I help the new population going to be born this spring and the ones that are still living here to stay healthy and not con contract mange from anybody else. That is sound wildlife management, my friends. Not leaving the animals alone to slowly die of starvation, mange, and rabies. You may not agree with what trappers do, and that's your opinion. But I will tell you this, that we know sound wildlife management, and we will keep doing it. It's better for Mother Nature and the population of the animals. So I'm going to take this young male out of the trap and do my thing. I'm going to remake the set. I don't even know if I'm going to make it right in that area. I'm, I think I'm just going to not even mess with it because there could be mange in that dirt and I can contract it. I doubt it because I got kneeling pads up, but I think I'm just going to take them out and go throw them in the pit. Put in a new set, maybe over, over there on that log or something like that. Okay. Because there is a chance, you see the catch circle? That he got the mange in the dirt, and now I could catch it. I think we're going to stay clear of that. But I have to take him out of the trap and go down and throw him in the pit. Anyway, just a little educational video of sound wildlife management and how trappers help the environment. Thanks for tuning in to Trapper Don CT Outdoor Show. We'll see what's next in the next video for you. Bye now.